Now guys, I'm introducing a new playlist in this channel and that is going to be based on chemistry practicals. Now I know some of you on doing such practicals in school, you may not have had enough exposure or you just want to expound on your knowledge. Then this, this is the place to check it out. So in this lesson, we are going to observe how certain metals react with water. Now we are going to start with this setup. So in this setup, we have four metals. We have lithium, sodium, potassium, and calcium. We want to find out or we want to observe what happens when we react these metals with water. Now the first three metals, lithium, sodium, and potassium belong to the same group. And that is group one, also known as alkaline metals. So these metals are said to be very reactive. But out of the three, potassium is the most reactive, followed by sodium and lastly, lithium. Now, in case you're wondering why this is so, lithium is the smallest of the three. It has an atom that is very small and therefore it has very strong metallic bonds. So when it comes to reactions, these metals need to lose their valence electron. For lithium, more energy is required to remove the valence electron. Therefore, reactivity of lithium is lower as compared to sodium and potassium. Now, all these beakers contain water with an indicator that has been added onto it. If the solution turns blue, that means that the solution that is present within the beaker or the solution that has been formed from the reaction of the metal and water is basic. So let's test it out. Lithium. Let's add a piece of lithium onto the first beaker. Hmm. What do you observe first? The lithium metal is floating on water and the reason for this is because lithium as with sodium and potassium are less dense than water and that is the reason why they are floating above water. Now look at the rate of the reaction. It looks to be slow. It is actually slow. Not as slow as other metals but slower compared to sodium and potassium. Let's move on to the next one. Sodium. Aha. Sasa mamba michelamka. Now. First things first, what happens to the sodium metal? It forms a ball, a silvery ball, and then that's on the surface of the water. Now, when it that's on the surface of water, it produces a freezing sound. Listen for it. There. Did you hear that? Now, the reason for that freezing sound is because of hydrogen gas being produced. So, these metals will react with water to form a hydroxide plus hydrogen gas. In the case of sodium, we are going to have sodium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. Now, the reason why the solution is turning blue is because of the indicator. It's showing you that the solution that is formed, which is sodium hydroxide, is basic. Moving on to potassium. Now, potassium being more reactive than sodium, the reaction is going to be explosive and that is the reason why this is usually not carried out in the lab. Now, as you can see, look at that. Wow. Now, you are also going to see that potassium forms a silvery ball which darts on the surface, similar to what sodium did, but there's an extra piece to it and this is the formation of a flame. You have a flame, specifically a lilac or a light purple flame that is formed. Now, whenever you hear the term flame, it simply refers to a mass of burning gases. When you have a flame, that means you are having a gas that is reacting with oxygen that has ignited. Now, in this case, the gas that is produced is hydrogen gas. So am I saying that hydrogen gas is the one that is burning and does it have a lilac flame? Yes and no. So hydrogen gas normally does not ignite, does not burn. But in this case, the reaction of potassium with water is exothermic. It leads to the production of a lot of heat energy. This heat energy causes the hydrogen gas being produced to ignite, to react with oxygen. Now, hydrogen gas does not burn with a lilac flame. The reason why we are seeing this color is because of the presence of potassium vapor. And there you go. Now, our last one, calcium. Now, calcium is less reactive than all the three metals. So, there we go. Observation number one, calcium metal sinks to the bottom of the beaker. The reason for this is because calcium is denser than water. And then the reaction now takes place. Now, the reaction is slower than the other three, but it does happen. If you look closer, you can see that there is freezing. We are having effervescence or the production of a gas, which is hydrogen gas. So the reaction leads to the formation of calcium hydroxide, which again is basic. Moving on to magnesium, did you think I had forgotten that? So magnesium is less reactive than calcium, but you can clearly see that there's fizzing 
bubbles being produced and that of course is hydrogen gas but the reaction is going to be slow especially when it comes to cold water you know water at room temperature so magnesium does react with it leading to the formation of magnesium hydroxide and hydrogen gas but the reaction is lower as compared to calcium last one iron and zinc so iron and zinc do not react with water at room temperature but they do react with steam leading to the formation of an oxide plus hydrogen gas and there we have it if you're interested in knowing how we test for hydrogen gas be sure to check out my next video where i discuss this in detail see you there